Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the Mach-E Vlog. We're visiting with ABB to learn about their next generation charger. We saw this at CES, we couldn't talk about it, but now we're at ACT Expo, we can talk all about it. Uh, and if, uh, please introduce yourself and what you do with ABB, and then we'll dive into the charger. Hi, Patrick, my name's Chris Thompson. Uh, I work in product and portfolio marketing at ABB Mobility, and super excited to be here at ACT to talk about this charger with you. All right, so let's go over the basics. It's 400 kilowatts, um, is, and that's a shared system. So you can do simultaneous charging with this one? Yes, it's uh, 400 kilowatts total. It's actually distributed dynamically in 50 kilowatt increments. So you can do 400, zero, 200, 200, 150, 250, depending on the charging strategy. And then I'm assuming like for a Nevi compliance, you could guarantee at least 150 out of each to make sure that it's gonna be Nevi compliant. Correct. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so for me, like the first thing that I noticed about this, big beautiful screen, lights up above. Um, tell it, like, I'll, I'll let you guide us through the product. <laughs> yeah, so we have uh, basically one of the best design teams, if not the best design team uh, in the charging market. So actually, when you look at this charger, it's kind of like a human. A human has two arms, two eyes, so you look at it, it's very symmetrical, right down it the is. middle. One, two, clear lighting on the top, LED lights, clear lighting on the gun holders, very clear call to actions, one, two, you have all the information you need on the screen, which type of adapter, which type of connector, so you see we have CCS1, J340, exactly here, and very clear and concise communication uh, on the screen itself. Including like even uh, like price uh, per kilowatt hour, yes. uh, which I like, because like I, it's no fun to have to like push through buttons and try to figure out things before you even plug in. Exactly, this screen is uh, what we like to do. What we like to say is that it is configurable. So you have the information that you need for the right, let's say, scenario for the customers coming. Very cool. And with the LED lights, it's not just white to illuminate it. It can do multiple colors. And yes, depending on the situation of the charger or the experience that the customer is enjoying, it, both the lights on the top and the gun holder uh, can change. That's very cool. And of course, you know, as you already mentioned, you have CCS1, J3400, and I, I'm assuming, of course, that's configurable. So if you want to do all CCS, you can. If you want yes, to do whatever completely combo. configurable. Very cool. On the other charger we have here today at ACT, we also show CCS2. So. Nice. European, if you guys yes. don't know that part. <laughs> CCS1 is in the US. Um, what, what other things are going to make this for like me, an end user, a better experience than what we have today? Well, how about I just take you through a flow so oh, you perfect. can see exactly what's going to make it better for you. So let's say you're driving up to the charger, you get here, very clear communication, plug, plug in, in to charge. charge. So what do I do? I take this out, connect to vehicle. Oh, nice. Very, very specific. But now what's very unique uh, about this charger and the software and the charger, if you want to be CTEP compliant in the state of California, you have to show the price and you actually have to confirm it on the screen. Oh, okay. So if you do this in Europe, you only need to flash the price. Okay. So we're very regionalized with our software specifications. So I can press confirm. You proceed with authorization. Let's see, I want to pay with my debit or credit card or I have an application. I so, can do so that. Here. Exactly. And so the screen tells you it's authorizing, authorizing successful. I can really read it. And what we're also testing out here at ACT uh, this week is when you're CTEP compliant, when would a user want to get their receipt? Typically, we want to think when they're just charging, because when you finish your charging, you just want to go. So yeah. you don't want to do any of this work. So we offer being able to enter the phone number on the terminal or scanning a QR code. Nice. So what I would like to do then is let's close it. Again, if I go back to CTEP compliant, you know this goes to four digits. So it's a decimal oh, wow. point in four. That's something that you have to be compliant specifically to sell in California. So we're talking about the kilowatt hours. It's exactly. four digits precise. Patrick, I don't know if you have a phone on you by chance. I do. So why don't you scan the QR code? All right. There we go. So maybe you, after you start charging, you want to go buy something in a retail shop. Basically, you have a transferable UI where you can see the state of your charge to take it with you so you know right when you want to come back. 
So this can be integrated into an application or a screen. And let's say you have the information about how long till 80%, 100%. And let's say that you want to return at 80% to save the battery of your vehicle. Charging done, return connector. So you see it's very easy. I return the connector, it's finished. I have all my details laid out here on the screen. If I want, I can look at the receipt to get that picture of how much I spent. Once I close, I get back in my vehicle and very easily I have a, a nice outro message, have a safe trip, and we see that the vehicle returns with the lighting back to welcoming the next driver to charge. That's super cool. I, you know, it's, it is one of those things like when you pull up, you want to see that the charger is available. But when you're getting ready to charge, a lot of this is confusing. It's like, do I plug in first? Do I get my app out first? So I like this whole flow that you have going on, as well as all of the information. So it's yes. like actually seeing the data on the screen and, and constantly updating. I think that's really slick. Thank you. Yes, we're we're trying to, let's say, solve the question for every type of user, a first time user and then, let's say, a returning user. So what is that experience to make communication clear and, let's say, elevate the charging experience? Right. Yeah. Now, of course, the other thing is, is that, um, you know, as an EV owner, we've had issues in the past with reliability uh, and with public charging in general. Um, I know at CES, you guys were talking about how you're addressing that with this next generation. Yeah, so what we've done, our power modules are made uh, with the latest uh, silicon carbide technology. Uh, what we've also done is we configured our uh, sub-assemblies to basically test all the components throughout the manufacturing process to have a 10-year life cycle. So we really want to focus on reliability of the charger, sub-assembling them all and putting them in the charger, basically stress testing them uh, to be reliable on the market. Because realistically, we want to have a 99% charging success rate. Right. So that means everything works, everything authorized, and nothing breaks. Sounds good to me. Now, this handle here, looks a bit different than a lot of the handles that I've seen previously. Is this something that, uh, like a new design or, or, or something that's been improved from previous generations? Yeah, so if I uh, take this out, uh, this is a ABB patented connector. So maybe nice. just uh, very briefly uh, to explain it, uh, it's a two-phase cooling system. So what does that mean? Let's say if I look at the connector, I have the pins, which basically have all the heat from charging with the vehicle. Right. So what we do is we try to extract the heat with water in a two-phase cooling system that then goes to wow. vapor. And then with cooling fins, it goes back and it keeps continuously removing heat away from the pins so you can charge at a higher temperature for longer with air-cooled cables because we believe air-cooled cables offer a total efficiency for the system as well as, uh, let's say, uh, less movable parts so they're more durable, speaking about reliability. And then another part that you notice with this cable is that it's uh, built in three phases. So there's the out outer phase, inner phase, and the pins. So that makes it very easily to be serviced in case something happens or broken. Uh, while we do do drive over tests, these things are, you know, they can be, uh, have a lot of wear and tear. So when you get serviced, you only have to replace the top. You don't need to replace any of the cable, so it can be done uh, in 15 okay. minutes rather than a couple hours. And again, also replacing this is, let's say, dollars compared to hundreds of dollars. Yeah, I can imagine. That saves a lot of money just being able to work on the, the yes. handle itself. Now, now you, you did say air cooled. So this is like one of the things that we're always used to is like, if you're going to do high power, you got to do liquid cooled, but yeah. you're, you're not doing liquid. Well, we believe you can get uh, similar speeds in an air cooled cable uh, mm -hmm. with higher reliability. So this cable can deliver 600 amps peak on both. So we believe that is what the, the market needs. And in, the reliability is actually you want the uptime. Like we've talked about right. before, you really want the charger to work and no downtime uh, versus a different experience. So yeah, like this compared, this is J3400, but like compared to like a Tesla connector, this is thicker, but it's air cooled, more reliability in the long run. Yes. That's awesome. Um, that, I'm really excited by this and can't wait to see these being deployed. Um, like I said, we, we heard about it at CES, now we're talking about it publicly. When do we expect to see these in the ground in the first installations? So I would say you can see these in the ground in Q3 uh, in North America and in Europe. That's very cool.
Yes. Um, anything else that we should learn about this before we wrap up? Yeah, what, so let's say our, our number one goal is always 99% uh, uh, percent charging success rate, and we want to have stable software to deliver that. Once we get to that point, what we want to do is have software that's basically configurable. So we have different modules. So for example, this could be a media module where you have a message to a customer depending on, on your network. You have information about the charger, where they can get uh, help with the number. If this is integrated into an operator, you can have a QR code for the application. And you can also find, uh, let's say, pricing information or ways to pay. Ways to pay. Yes. So maybe on the next screen, what I would like to show you also a media with a nice picture, but this is more for like your geek mode. Like what's my charging curve? How yeah. fast am I charging, et cetera? And then you have uh, clear information down there. But what I would like to draw your attention to, let's say if you're in the charging market of how we can help customers, let's say, um, have more information about their experiences, maybe this charging speed is not as high as they would like. Right. But you can have information because maybe you're in Southern California during the summer and everyone's using air conditioning. So the grid is actually your inhibitor right. to your charging speed. So you can clearly communicate that. So as a customer, you're not really calling the help number anymore because it's clearly demonstrated that it's because there's no power on the grid. Or as we like to have this EV adoption curve, what can my vehicle take? Because not everyone knows how many volts are in the vehicle, right. what the battery size is. So this is a way to communicate it to basically enhance the customer journey and give knowledge back uh, for a successful charging experience. And if you're in Minnesota, it can say like low temperatures cause your battery. Exactly. Yeah. That, that, I think that's really helpful because like, uh, you know, we, we make YouTube videos about this stuff and we'll get people commenting like, hey, I tried this charger. It said 150 kilowatts. I only got 80 kilowatts. Wow. And, and, but they have no idea why. And it's really hard to diagnose, diagnose it after the fact. But yeah. if you can see it on the screen, that's really, really, really helpful. Exactly. I mean, there's a wide range of battery sizes out there, D ratings. Right. Uh, people also don't know if they set their capacity to maybe 80% and they didn't even realize it's in the car or in the application. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I think what's really interesting is like you start seeing that charging curve. I think the other thing that could be important for people is like, as they see it slowing down, they might realize it's time to unplug versus getting that last, you know, two kilowatt hours. Exactly. <laughs> also for the life uh, lifetime of the battery inside the vehicle itself. Yeah, I, th I think that's something that's really interesting here is it's like uh, tapering down to maintain battery health. Because yeah. a lot of people don't understand why it's slowing down. They're, yeah. they're just like, the bucket's full, so it's getting slow, but it's, it's slowing down to maintain the battery health. Yeah, if uh, people read their, uh, let's say, instruction manuals in their EV <laughs> cars, they should normally say, don't charge past 90%, right. 80%. So maybe that's preset and it's already derated inside the vehicle. Well, um, I always believe more information, the better. I like seeing all of this information, so I think it's really cool that you're actually making use of all of these screens that are yeah. available, and I'm gonna appreciate it. Yeah, so again, I would just like to preface, these screens come after we, we have a foundation of a, a software. Right. So what comes later is once we get to 99% charging success, and then we can really uh, configure it after that point. Hey. No qualm for focusing <laughs> on reliability before extra stuff. Yes. Right? Like reliability is is key for all of us. Exactly. Another thing that I'm noticing up here, up top, before I forget, is uh, it looks like you guys have a cable management. It's like the cable isn't stuck back there. It looks like you have uh, a swing arm. Yeah. So yeah. basically, we've integrated uh, the cable management system into the vehicle. So you can, or sorry, into the charger. Yeah. So what you have here is you have, uh, let's say, length and reach to basically hit basically any uh, inlet you would have on your vehicle, whether it's a Porsche Taycan, Polestar, uh, Fiat 500 BEV. So you can reach almost anything. So it's just self-retractable. You know, you can adjust the tension depending on how you want it. And it's very easy. It keeps the cable uh, safe and ready to go. And hopefully off the ground when they're ready to plug it back. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Uh, that's always important as well. Yeah, that, that's actually pretty neat. Uh, I like how it just like, it pulls out very easy. It keeps yeah. it up overhead. So you're not dragging it across the ground. Exactly. As you're trying to get it. So yeah. uh, another thing that I like about this, um, I'm excited to see these uh, de deployed uh, 
hopefully, as you said, Q3 on track. Yes, perfect. I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing about this. Um, uh, we're excited to see where ABB is going, um, not only this, but in the future. Um, we're excited for more reliability and looking forward to see uh, these in the ground. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the show.